Hey there, welcome to a new Photoshop tutorial, probably the last tutorial of this 2017. Uh, it's gonna be a pretty quick tutorial, pretty easy one. I'm gonna show you just how to um, embellish an image like this using uh, light effects and some uh, some stock images. Uh, this is the end result of this and this is the original image. So uh, that was my phone. So this is the original image and this is the final edit. So I hope you will enjoy it and let's get started. I got this image from unsplash.com, which is this one, I'm gonna copy it. Uh, you'll have the full resolution on my website, links on the video description. So you can download this image uh, for free. And as you can see, well, the exposure here on the window, the image was burned and we have uh, lots of uh, chromatic aberrations. But anyways, uh, that's why I wanted to add some uh, other elements here to make uh, this image look a bit better and a bit more interesting. If you don't wanna add those light effects, that's okay but I added them just because I like that. So let's create a copy. And the first thing I wanna do is use the camera raw filter. So I'm gonna to go to filter and choose camera raw. Um, if you don't have Photoshop CC, you will not have the camera raw filter there. I mentioned this in lots of my tutorials. Uh, so you have to save the image as a TIFF file and then open it back in Photoshop and this will open it in camera raw. Or if you have Lightroom, open it in Lightroom first and get rid of this uh, chromatic aberrations here and make the edit that I'm gonna make here. Now, I'm not gonna go step by step, I created a preset. So I'm gonna go to load settings, like right over here. And it's this one, girdle window, uh, PSD box. All you have to do is apply this preset and you will have all these edits here. I think you can add this edit in Lightroom as well. Um, you have to go to metadata or something like that and choose load metadata from external file and choose the XMP file with this name and if you are on here on camera raw just go here and choose load settings and just look for this girl window dot XMP uh, or if not I'm gonna uh, go uh, um, take you to each screen here and you can pause the video and uh, copy the settings these are here on the basic uh, and then I just change the split toning to have these values and I added some uh, facts here with the post crop vignette and here on the lens correction settings to remove the chromatic aberration and that's it I'm gonna click OK and this is our starting image you can see what we've done so far so the next thing I, I, I did is I wanted to create some sun rays and I used the technique which I used on a previous tutorial I'm gonna you're gonna see some images here and the, the card there on the top right uh, you can go that will take you if you click it to that tutorial so I'm gonna go quick here I'm just gonna add the gradient uh, but as I said I have this on another tutorial so I'm not gonna explain it again here so basically what you do is just change the style to radial open the gradient choose type to noise um, radial is not the correct type it's angle and here let's go back to the gradient editor I'm gonna change the model to HSB and change the roughness to 100%. Choose restrict colors and now simply remove the red from here and this will give you a black and white image. I'm gonna click OK for now because I wanna change the blend mode of this to screen. And now I have left only this race here. Now, uh, if you wanna move this around, you have to uh, double click and have this panel open now and now you can move this around like that. I'm gonna place it somewhere here and if you don't like this distribution simply choose randomize and that's it you can also choose add transparency if you want to have softer effects and I think I like this one well let's cycle through this a little more like this for example click OK and you can change the angle if you want uh, but I think I like this one I'm gonna click OK and now I'm gonna rasterize this layer uh, rasterize layer and I'm gonna go to filter blur and choose Gaussian blur and uh, let's see the amount of blur I think this would be okay now I'm gonna press control command U I'm working destructively here this time and I'm gonna choose colorize and just drop the lightness a bit and increase the saturation this will give you the tone uh, some tone on the on your image and uh, you can choose the hue from here and saturate it. 
it doesn't have to be really that saturated so uh, don't worry too much um, let's click OK and now with this layer mask that is uh, left there uh, we can get rid of the top part we don't need that and now what I'm gonna do uh, the transition is kind of harsh here I'm gonna drop the opacity and flow pressing the 5 and shift 5 to change it automatically without having to, having to do it manually and I'm gonna switch back to white and just paint once there and with black to fade away here okay so this is how my layer mask looks like okay so without the layer mask and with the layer mask we just need those rays uh, only there and on top of the woman we also have to remove those rays at least on the face not completely but uh, most of them now I want to hide this um, really bad edit here uh, this is most likely because with the window here them it was burned so they dropped the highlights I want to fix that using a, a not a solid color I'm gonna use a, an empty layer and I'm gonna set it on screen from here screen blend mode and with the brush opacity and flow 100% switch to I'm gonna sample a color from here something bluish and I'm just gonna paint that's too bright The next thing I'm going to do is add those light effects. If you don't like them, just don't add them. Um, I like to uh, add that kind of stuff. Um, if you're just editing a photo to make it look a bit better, you can stop here if you want. So uh, in order to add those lights, I'm going to create a new layer and set it on screen. And I'm going to open my stock image again. Again, I get this from unsplash.com. And I'm going to copy uh, this part over here. I don't need the girl, so I'm just going to copy this part double click to close the selection cut with control x don't save and paste this over as you can see this is how it looks like um you can make them smaller if you want i make a few copies uh, maybe something like that just add them there on the window if you like them only on that part I just flip them horizontally or vertically and change the size to make them look a bit different so they're not all the same if you have outer particles, uh, you can add those as well. I'm just going to create another copy and put it right over there. It's just to add sort of a fantasy looking effect. As I said, if you don't like them, just don't put them and that's, that's it. Now, the next thing that I did is I added another stock image, which is this one. And this one, I distorted it. So I'm going to put it right over there, make it smaller. With Control T, you can load this free transform. And again, I'm going to put it on screen. This time, I'm going to go to filter and choose distort and choose wave. And here, what you can do here, uh, I wish they could, they would change this to have a bigger preview as well. But anyways, um, what you do here is decrease the scale a bit because if you leave it too big, you're going to distort it too much. Just re um, reduce the scale something to one similar to what I have here, and just uh, move this around until you get something you like. You don't want to distort it too much like this, so the more separated you have these two controllers, the better, because that way you're not going to distort the image too much, because we're going to do this in several steps. So I'm going to click OK here, and now I'm going to move it somewhere else and probably rotate it, and go to Filter and reapply the filter again. And this is the kind of effect you get. Okay, I'm gonna flip it. Here I was lucky that I got this, uh, let me show you. This sort of shape here looks like um, light is coming up, uh, on her or going out of her body or something like that. And here, well, I have to kind of create that shape if you want or just simply create a random shape and that's it. Also what you can do uh, is you can press Ctrl Command T, right click and choose warp and just move this around, warp it. Uh, this will give you sharper edges though so if you don't like this effect don't do it. I'm just gonna show you what you can do. I'm gonna press enter and this is the kind of effect you get. Let me zoom in a bit. 
and it's not necessary to add a whole lot of these shapes just a few ones and with levels you can increase the mid uh, well darken the midtones and the shadows and you can uh, hide some of the part of the effect okay so that's how i did it i'm gonna go to filter and choose wave again and see what we get and place it right over there and then you can uh, place the image there again uh, with Control V and do the same once again. Let's make it on screen. This time I'm gonna leave the original size. I'm, I'm going to wave and do the same. Move it around and rotate it and apply the filter again. And that's pretty much it. I'm gonna make it smaller now and probably put it somewhere around there. The effect, the effect, well, it's too much, so I'm gonna use the layer mask. And with the brush, I'm gonna get rid of some of that effect. And here as well, in the first one, just to clean the face of the of this of the girl, like that. And we're pretty much done. Uh, I did one more thing, which is adding this um, bird over here. Let's see if I can find it. You'll find the image on my website. A smaller resolution, though, um, because I purchased it from. Uh, depo depositphotos.com this is the the bird I added some you can see some outer glow you can pause the video and copy the settings if you want and also a color overlay and I placed it right over here and then a new layer and I added some glows uh, with screen blend mode and then this glow on the uh, on the um, PSD file that you can download you can see exactly all the layers that I added but I'm gonna do it just a bit quicker here so we don't spend too much time so a big glow of light over there and that's it and if it's too bright use a darker tone I mentioned this in other tutorials that I have when using the screen blind mode it's better to use a darker tone if you if you're let me show you an example for example if I use this one and put a glow of the uh, light there that's too bright if on less effect instead of dropping the opacity of the layer it's better to use a darker tone a darker uh, color and the effect will be a lot better more realistic okay now we're done let's add a couple of adjustment layers um, start with the color lookup and I'm gonna use the edgy amber uh, you have to have Photoshop CS6 at least to have to be able to use the color lookups I'm gonna leave it on 18% and I think I also use some of the blend if so double click and choose on the blending options underlaying layer with pressing the alt key simply move this a bit around like that and this one as well that with the alt key you can split this and uh, blend the image a bit better and next i use the curves adjustment and i'm going to give you the values that i have i'm going to start with the red i'm going to go into the channels and i have this set to six and the output to zero and then a point here with input 150 and output 141 and on the green channel again two points the bottom one output zero input zero and output to 22 and then another point right over there with input 181 and output 173 this will give more green tones on the shadows and a bit more of magenta on the highlights and or maybe I was I'm wrong let's see and then on the blue channel um, have three points one with input 53 output 63 a second point with input 130 and output 130 and the top one input 255 and output 225 like this and this is the effect you get with the with the curves adjustment. Okay, uh, remove some of the uh, some of the contrast and add some green on the shadows. Now uh, let's go again with camera raw. I'm gonna shift Alt Command E. Uh, pressing those keys will merge all the layers into a new one. And I'm going to filter and camera raw again. If you don't have camera raw uh, as a filter, you can save the image as a P as a TIFF file and open it back in Photoshop or use Lightroom if you have it. 
And here, uh, I don't remember the settings that I use, but basically just uh, do whatever you want <laughs> here. Uh, try to stick with the same with the same color tones if you uh, if you want. I'm gonna increase the vibrance, the clarity. I'm gonna remove it a bit. This will create sort of a hazy effect. Saturation. I'm gonna bump it up again a bit. Contrast slightly higher. And then um, here on the camera calibration, you can change the look of your the tone of your colors and change a bit the aspect of, of the overall image. That's kind of saturated, so I could fix that with the HSL here on the saturation, desaturate a bit my oranges. And here on the basic, I can change the color temperature if, it, if it's not right or if you don't like it. Split toning, I could add some to fix some of the tones on the shadows and highlights. I'm gonna leave it like that. Probably some sharpening. I'll actually just increase the details and click OK. And before camera raw and after. I changed a bit the tones, but this is the final result. Let me show the original image. We started from this and we ended up with this. Again, this is sort of a, these lights, if you don't like them, if, the, if you think it's too fake, simply don't add them. I just wanted to show you how you can kind of change a bit the, an image like this using light effects and uh, this sort of uh, color tones. So I hope you enjoyed it. Um, Merry Christmas to all of, uh, all of you. Happy holidays and we'll see you next time. Uh, most likely on January or something like that. Hopefully I'm, I, I can get back to the challenges as well. Lots of people ask me if I, I will post more challenges. Of course I will do, but right now I'm not in a very good situation to, to do that. So I hope in January I can uh, post more challenges for you. That's all for, uh, for today. See you next time.